Hey everyone, sorry I'm late. I just came from Lisa and Tony's wedding, but I'll tell you about them later. Right now, I need to talk to you guys about bar diagrams. So this now is our third video about bar diagrams, and there's a reason why. It's because they are extremely useful when solving problems. They really help us visualize the relationships among all the knowns and all the unknowns, and therefore can help us solve the problem. All right, now I can talk to you guys about Lisa and Tony's wedding and the problem they've asked us to solve. So after they got engaged, which was at the beginning of last summer, Lisa and Tony decided to total their two savings accounts and found that together they had $800. During that summer, Lisa spent one third of her savings on her wedding dress, but didn't make any money all summer. On the other hand, Tony didn't spend any of his savings was able to add an additional $100 to his savings because he met a generous leprechaun at his bachelor's party. At the end of the summer, Tony had the exact same amount of savings as Lisa, and they asked us, how much savings did Tony have at the beginning of the summer? How should we approach this problem since it seems to be very complicated? We don't know how much Lisa had at the beginning of the summer or at the end of the summer, and we don't know how much Tony had at the beginning of the summer or at the end of the summer. So while there are a lot of unknowns, but we know just what to do about that, let's make some bar diagrams. First, what we want to do is we want to use this bar to represent how much Lisa had at the beginning of the summer. Next, the question tells us that Lisa spent one-third of her savings during the summer. So let's just cut this bar up into three equal parts. And since during the summer she spent one-third of her savings, then by the end of the summer, she would only have two-thirds left. Now let's go to Tony. The problem told us that at the end of the summer, Tony and Lisa had the exact same amount of money. So we will use this bar to illustrate how much money Tony had at the end of the summer. It should be the same size as the bar that was used to represent how much Lisa had at the end of the summer. And just like Lisa's bar, we will divide Tony's bar into two equal pieces. The next thing the question tells us is that Tony was able to add an additional $100 into his savings. That means that at the beginning of the summer, he had $100 less than at the end of the summer. Beginning has one E. Beginning has one E. The final thing that the question tells us is that at the beginning of the summer, Lisa and to Tony had a total of $800. And we can represent that using stripes, just to make it look more clear for you. So at the beginning of the summer, or the striped part, represents $800, according to the question. Next, using the bar diagram, we can see that all five bars, which are all equivalent, is equal to $800 plus $100. So all five bars is $800 plus $100 or $900. And now since each bar is equivalent, we can just divide 900 by 5 to find how much each bar represents. $900 divided by 5, which is equal to $180. Now that we've solved that, let's see what the question's asking. How much savings did Tony have at the beginning of the summer? 
So that looks kind of difficult right there. We can't really get anything from there. So let's just go straight to end of the summer. So the end of the summer is just two bars, which means to find Tony at the end, we can just take each bar is 180, 180 plus another 180 is equal to $360. And that's at the end. And the beginning is $100 less than at the end. So Tony at the beginning would be 360 minus $100, which is equal to $260. So Tony had $260 at the beginning of the summer. Let's recap. First, draw a bar diagram. Use bars to represent the knowns and the unknowns in the question and illustrate their relationships among each other. Second, use the diagrams to solve the problem.